Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's episode of Ramble Mancy. I'm sorry. Let me start that over. What's up, Ramble fam? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm still not used to it, so because I was sort of a joke on my part, but everybody decided that that was the thing that we were doing. So anyway, hi, welcome. Um, tonight we are joined by Dare. Welcome, welcome. It's me. Hello. We've, Hi, uh, everyone. We've been trying to have Dare on the stream forever, and between schedules, uh, theirs and ours, it just didn't work until today. So here we are. Um, the year of the making. It's <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we're gonna be talking about uh, we're gonna be talking about creating and making, just sort of like the act of cre- of creating stuff. Um, do like our creative process that kind of stuff um and uh yeah but before we get into that some quick announcements and reminders so first of all pe- the the immediate pending stuff tomorrow 6 p.m pacific time over on q times uh is the first night of republic city rumble our uh rumble. avatar legends actual play that we're doing in collaboration with q times um it's gonna be the first night of that I'm very excited. Had a meeting with the players today. Y'all aren't ready. I'm not ready. But, like, y'all are ready. Um, It's going to be amazing. And I'm very, very pumped for it. So you can catch that over on Q Times, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, uh, You'll see all the announcements for that stuff probably throughout the day. Tomorrow we'll all be yelling about it. Secondly, um, uh, I will also, at <laughs> unfortunately, around the same time be uh on another channel on a charity stream kids on bikes um it'll be a lot of fun um i will put the actual like info in the discord because i once again failed to do that um because yeah you remember what the name of the twitch channel is no because i like the twitch channel and the uh and the twitter account are different so okay. <laughs> and i only remember the twitter account which is uh sergey compositions um i've retweeted it a few times but i'll put the info in the discord later tonight um but yeah so that will be there <laughs> yes and i will be playing kids on bikes so uh it'll be it'll be a lot of fun i'm very 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 excited um so because of that uh the republic city rumble for the next several weeks we will not be having mass effect night in the discord um because our attentions will be focused elsewhere so yeah but we will pick up with that again uh in october sometime right is that what month we're going into i don't know (laughs) yeah september october november december is that how that works i've never been sure Uh, okay allegedly i have to say all of them in sequence like that august september october no like i have to i have to say all of them in sequence or i won't remember where they all fall listen to be fair like a couple of days ago I almost embarrassed myself <clears throat> by saying that like our winter break was like a month away, and I was like, I just fully just skipped over. Two, I, w- I just fully yeah, skipped right, over two right. months in my head. So I wish. Also, I found the Twitch channel. Thank you, thank you, John, for doing that. Oh, I know that channel. Yeah, right. yeah. So we're uh, the fundraiser is for the uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So, um, so that will be happening tomorrow. I believe it is happening at five. 40. The stream, like it's a, it's a full like 12 hour stream, um, so it'll be going all day. But like the kids on bikes game starts at 5:40 oh, Pacific wow. time, 8:40 Eastern. Um, so yeah, that's where I will be at that time. Right. Am I missing Thanks. stuff? I think that's everything. I think that's all of it. In, yeah, Infinite Horizon at its usual time next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Otherwise, um, we have a we uh, currently running a running a donation goal. I think that we're pretty close to for the month. That's true. Yes. Um, that lovely green bar that is beneath all of our faces uh, is what we have switched to doing from sub goals because of Twitch's lack of response to mm-hmm. hate rate. So uh, supporting us for the exact same amount of a sub actually supports us for twice as much. Um, if we can hit $250 by the end of the month, I, yours truly, uh, will run a absolutely chaotic, um, Jackbox games night in the discord. Uh, we'll play some TKO. We'll, we'll say some wild shit playing some quiplash. It'll be a good time. So, uh, that's what we've, that's what we've got in store. If we can fill that green bar up. (sighs) Yeah. All right. I think that's all of our stuff. So, um, 
tonight, yeah. I'm going to start us off by throwing Freeman under the bus. Freeman, what do you it's got just, for us? I knew it was coming. Did it's you? Wow, so that's, a, that's amazing. See, John, is, well, so John's refreshing. usually was, the one I throw under the bus, and he never sees it coming. So I was ready. I was ready to be thrown under the bus. We, we legally can't prove that now. <laughs> that's See, true. After so long, after so many, after so many years, I, I guess. Knew. I guess if we're if we're like if we're years. friends for like half of our lives, this is what happens. So this is the result. Fre- <sighs> Freeman knows all my moves. <laughs> Very nice bus, by the way. Um, <laughs> I like the color scheme going on there. Um, I never knew that buses came in triple decker. So tall, like a it's, house. It's, it's called European Extreme, actually. <laughs> <Very tall. laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's correct. I forget. Uh, yeah. So yeah, what do you yeah. what do you, what are you thinking, Freeman? What do you what? I'm I'm just really curious because we always talk about. Always, I'm always curious about everyone's creative process Mm -hmm. and what we uh, go into to get to the thing that we're doing. So I'm always curious about the result or not the result, the the process. What do we do to get into the project or what have you? Yeah, I think it's because we've talked about it here a lot, but we have a guest there (laughs) and so that means we have new perspectives. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, huh. See, the thing is, like, starting ADHD, executive dysfunction, mm. starting is really hard for me. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you about, like, how I solve problems and solve, like, I deal with blockage, in, like, creative blockage. Couldn't tell you how to start. I don't know. I don't even know that. So if somebody else has something, that, something. <laughs> so like, this is this is more. Sometimes, sometimes they're my favorite times when you get that fucking flash of of inspiration where you can't think, like you physically cannot think about anything else. Like you 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 you're like, okay, I have this idea. It is incredible. If I start writing right now, and then it's two hours later, and you're like, I or like two, three, four hours later, and you've skipped a couple of meals, and but you wrote a thing, or you like you made a thing um like those are great but i can't always rely on that when i need to do stuff and so i have there's lots of different parts of the process here for me that we can talk about but i have this little ritual that i do (laughs) to get myself to focus on things um and i will sit down and i will spread out all of the things that i need to have to do my project to work on my project in front of me so like i'll put the google doc in front of me i'll put notes up there And then I'll put like lo-fi beats over here on this screen. And then I will put on my headphones. I'll pick up my little pumpkin spice candle. (laughs) So many, that's too many steps already. (laughs) I'm like watching the fizz, like the pain in Dara's expression. Oh, I'm I'm a face reactor. Mm -hmm. I I can't help it. I can't hide it. I understand. I'll light that. I'll turn on the music. I'll put on my headphones and then I'll just like zone out and stare at the candle until everything else and until everything else has just like ceased to exist. And then I'll do what I was going to do. And... I think you've described being an oracle. You simply let the work <laughs> take you over. You just let the spirit of creativity consume you is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I I, I breathe in the vapors and then uh, the spirit of Delphi channels through me. Um, summons the muses and... Uh... This is the second time today I have joked about invoking the muses. <laughs> Which... when you gotta... <laughs> You know, if I had a nickel for every time today, I'd have 10 cents, which is not a lot, but it is weird that it happened twice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm free to go. I think yeah, I have go it. For it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it depends, yeah, honestly, it. for me, depending on what type of project I'm working on, um, which is one of the ways I can help compartmentalize it in my head. Um, because if it's something that's like very much for me that I'm doing some because I enjoy it or something I'm passionate about. I do not care about what it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, it is a thing of like, like when I wrote when the sun dies, which is a, essentially like a game about the world ending, uh, which is like nine pages. I wrote it literally in the middle of another stream because I'm a monster. Um, 
that like it was something that had been rattling in my head for like three months that I like had planned out conceptualized completely and I just needed to finally do the work to put it on paper and I was finally sitting down in a moment where I was like oh this is we're in the middle of D&D combat thus my brain is actively not doing anything <laughs> I'm a warlock I have one move <laughs> I, you can guess <laughs> The old hex and vex. Like we... <laughs> yes. It, I, I have nothing else going on up here. I might as well use it for something. So in the middle of the stream, I'm on Canva just formatting. Um, and if it's something like that where it only exists for me and like something I just wanted to make for myself, completely easy. I am also, however, scarily enough, an editor. And that's where the problem <laughs> shows up because it's other people's work. And that normally can push me. Because I know I'd be disappointing someone else. I'm not saying that's a healthy way to, to like think about it, but it truly is my method. If it's for anyone else, I care about other people so much, it will get done on time. Oh, no yeah. matter what black magic that will happen, it will be done. <laughs> See, like getting me to write my own projects, it's so difficult, but like also, and I, I also do uh, like TTRPG and comics editing. And so like, if, if somebody else has given me their thing to edit, I'm like, all right, I have to have this done. <laughs> yes. There's a reason why I guessed on a million things, but I do not do th stuff on my own channel. One of those requires a lot more commitment and follow through that I cannot do for myself. <laughs> I waited, I waited two years of being a content creator elsewhere and constantly guesting on other things and like being here before I was like, maybe I should stream on my own Twitch channel. <laughs> It's for just funny. about that reason. It's so, it's very funny, Derek, because you described uh, like making your own content as requiring a lot of commitment and follow through. I'm like, oh, is this a minor miracle that I have accomplished? <laughs> like, have I have I created a minor miracle in Rule of Law? Because <laughs> you're right. I don't know how I got here. Um... <laughs> I'm also really big on like the sunk cost fallacy in which I know the second I stop doing something, that's like it, the second I stop doing it once, then it's done. This is the Duolingo problem for me. <laughs> I've tried learning French three times. However, I stopped once and that was enough. It, I, I like to be on a hot streak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that you, that you, that you say that because I also experienced that but it, that's also weirdly one of my when I talk about like getting around being blocked that is like one of my strategies for getting around being blocked is literally to stop because like one of the things that I like I learned pretty quickly about myself once I um, started learning about you know my ADHD and stuff like that I realized that it, if I can't do something on a particular day, like if I, if there's something that I get just, I'm just, my brain is just not there. If I try to, I, if I try to push through and do it anyway, maybe I can do it, but it won't be good. And I'll be fully drained on the other side. So I just started, uh, walking away. Um, that that's, and doing something else which weirdly works. So like, I imagine it would be maddening for somebody to watch me work because I'll do like a little bit of this and then I stop because I can't go any further. And then I'll do a little bit of this other thing and then I stop because I can't go any further. And I'll pick up another thing and I just do that. And I do a little bit of a time and then every once in a while, I'll take an actual break and just stop working and do something just for fun. And then I'll come back and do a little bit and just keep doing that until it's all done. <laughs> yeah. Like that's why in the in the in the arcane little process that I described my 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 oracular like uh, whatever it is like part of the first step of that is putting everything that I think I can work on today in front of me so that I can flit from thing to thing whenever I get stuck, and I think part of it actually like the little series of steps that I take to kind of zone myself in is like basically building momentum for myself. I'm basically going, okay, I've done this little thing and this little thing. And like, it's a series of little things that I complete and they build me up into not only controlling the environment and making it free of distractions because like quiet music makes it so that I can't hear the planes flying overhead or my roommates rustling around in the kitchen downstairs or and my, my attention can't go whoop off to those things. 
So it's like, it's, it's a combination of like, I do these little things so that I build up momentum and now I can bounce from project to project as I think about it. You know, I can be working in tabletop tool chest over here and editing for the Phoenix over here. And then when I kind of get stuck and I'm like, you know, my attention starts to wander, I can come back to like tabletop tool chest or something, you know, like that, that kind of, that kind of vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Freeman, what do you, what do you usually do? I, um, I lose my um did i lose my i my, lose my damn mind is what i do <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry that camera shenanigans are happening right now but uh yeah i lose my damn mind um yeah i definitely work on uh, I, I usually just work on way too many things that are just w not related to each other to be honest um and that's why i recently did this project um, building a ghillie suit because it's just so different from like uh, any kind of performative uh, thing or any kind of writing thing it's strictly like with my hands which I have to do things with my hands I have to like I don't know work on a piece of like carving up some wood or like sewing something so I guess like maybe not to the point well I don't know maybe that's not true maybe overwhelming maybe it is like I do overwhelm myself with like different different things from each other to like work through something i think um uh yeah i i feel that uh i i like to have a bunch of very varied types of projects it's it feels way better for my head than a bunch of things that are very similar mm -hmm. um like so i tend to guess on things that are wildly different from each other and then like i also tend to like mess around and make music on my phone and I, I write poetry, uh, so it's different from the other types of writing and editing I do. And then, like, all my tabletop projects I guest on are normally wildly different in terms of style, which helps make it feel, like, all of them feel really fresh. So I, I think the sense of change in the projects can make it good. Because if I had to edit, like, two different books at once, I'd die. Uh, it's too similar in my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, mm -hmm. that makes sense, though. Like, having... having your brain do, having your brain work in different ways like because and, and now that i think about it that i think i'm i'm very similar but i don't put that knowledge into practice too often because like i'll work on too many of this of the same things and i'll start like if i start doing that then i start realizing Fighting. i start yeah exactly you start losing that kind of energy and while it is hmm i'm ha we're we're having realizations on stream today. Hold on, are happening <laughs> tonight live in front of the audience. <laughs> we're having this moment. I'm realizing now why sometimes my stepping away strategy works, and sometimes it doesn't work as well. And it doesn't work as well on those days when I switch from one project to another similar project. Mm, I see, I see. I have learned today. Thank you, Freeman and, <laughs> and Dare. I appreciate your insights. <laughs> 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 also, uh, just in a shout out to Panduin in the chat for the 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 cheeky twenty four month sub. Thank you for the wow. two whole two years, years of being subscribed to our channel. Oh, a month wow. delayed because of PayPal fuckery, but we're here now, and we're so glad to have you here. Yeah. Wow. Also, I saw that we got a donation or two. I don't know how many, yeah. but. We, yeah, we, we got it. We got some donations. Edge of it <laughs> uh, donated six ninety, of course, uh, in classic oh. Edge of Fit fashion. Um, nice, very nice. nice. Uh, Freeman can't <laughs> be tricked. He's got cryptid intuition. <laughs> yeah, <That's, laughs> cryptid intuition is power. Yeah, it, is. it really is. Um, I also saw I saw Olivia poke poke their head in. Hello, Olivia. Um. It's been so long since you've since you've been here, like not on screen, that I forgot that you I gave you a mod sword at some point. <laughs> so it was I know. very jarring. Um, <laughs> we love seeing the little green swords. And actually, they're white mm -hmm. swords in a green background, technically speaking. But mm. uh, yeah. a little green sword. It is. Um, Heck yeah. That's my scientific answer. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Now my head inverted the colors, and it was a green sword in a white background. I was just like. <laughs> Um, it was never a sword, but only the outline of a sword. Now, what does that make you feel? I've been given a cookie a, a cookie cutter this whole time <laughs> to vanish. It is, a, it is a bladed weapon, much like That's a sword. True, true. That's true. Cookie don't, cutters, don't, I, don't give that co actual cookie cutters are weight. basically swords. I mean, like <laughs> when we get right down to it, cookie cutters are basically it swords. Is, 
It is a type of sword, indeed. You know. Oh, I, I've cut myself I, on one. Can I get a sword lesbian to weigh in on this one? Our cookie cutter swords. I don't have my sword near me. Oh. I have I have six of them somewhere in this house. Oh, awesome. Best that I the best that I have is a very glittery dagger. Um, I think I have a saber in this room somewhere. Is, what, Ooh. Hmm. That's that's now, incredible. It's my stream saber. I keep it for uh, visual bits mostly. Stream saber. <laughs> I mean, visual I have the best. I have I have the I have the fan for many for much the same reason. All right, we're all showing off our props, and for once, I am propless. Okay. <laughs> what do you guys what? think? Also, my what? camera is just messing with me tonight. Sorry, guys. Raymond. I have, I have Raymond so is, many in this house. Freeman I'm propless. propless. Oh no, I'm blurry. So that's my prop. <laughs> Freeman is blurry. That is my I, prop. I, I own it. I think Freeman, Freeman, your camera has trouble focusing on you because you're a cryptid, and yeah. it has trouble. The, the, the more, the more I come to terms with it, the more my camera's like, I know, I know, I see. It's you. like, it's when like, I don't in this case actually. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia says, Olivia says, cookie cutter is not a sword. The sword lesbian has spoken. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you, we appreciate your input. <laughs> okay. Your service is invaluable. I don't have a sword, but I have a, a key that looks like a key that turns into a tiny little letter opener. What? I've, that. I've read this, bro. That's a sword for mice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, they were kind enough to, to let me borrow it for the night so I could have a prop to show up, but I'll get it back later. Of course. Mm. <laughs> I'm like their plan on coming to collect. <laughs> uh, Terrible. Oh, the God. show yeah. constantly living up to its name. Um, it is. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of like. I mean, my my. I think the actual answer to that to that question for me of like creative process is my creative process is like get other people. Because I've said on numerous occasions, only kind of joking, that like I don't, I'm not one of those people who thinks with their brain. I think with my mouth. Like I, mm -hmm. like I have to, I I process verbally. Like yeah. that's how I do things. It's the whole reason we have a writer's room for our TTRPG stuff, um, on this channel because like yep. sometimes my brain will just not go, and I need, I need other people, and I can't talk to myself. I like I've had so many people. Sit, like suggest, I was about to ask yeah, that I've question. had so many people suggest to me like, "Oh, well, have you tried talking aloud to yourself?" No, because I can't. It's terrible. I can't have a conversation, a full on conversation with myself unless I'm doing NPC voices and practicing in the in the car. But like, <clears throat> I can't do that. I've tried recording myself, but then ADHD brain again, like it won't let me actually listen to it because you know once it's there, it's there, and I don't have to keep it in here, so it's on there. But then I'm never gonna check there. So like. Same same reason I can't write notes, um, but yeah no like I have to talk to somebody else because I process not just through talking but through like an exchange. That's how I process. I process through an exchange of like, yeah. So, I am the same way, Olivia. I swear, a third of my conversations are with myself. Uh, essentially, giving myself like college lectures just to no one in particular. <laughs> I have given uh, voice lessons to myself. Like, <laughs> if no one got me, I got me. I, I, I've, I've been back on into back in like my my Avengelian hole because I am deeply anime trash, uh, and I always have been. It's my favorite secret. Uh, and I was essentially just like talking through the plot of Ava in like the like human loneliness as a condition like two days ago to no one. <laughs> like, it's just a fun thing to do. Yeah. I have a captive audience, my own brain. <laughs> See, my I I can't I can't even listen to myself. I don't know how you all do it. Like I can't do it. Like I, I can't pay attention to myself. Also, I just wanted to point out, Nico says, take a good look at that thing, Lucas. Mitch has one of those. Mitch is dead. Mitch <laughs> Mitch is, is gone. <laughs> yeah. So Mitch had one of those. <laughs> um anyway. <laughs> uh yes, yeah. for for context, Dare. Uh, there was a mouse living in my in my uh, in my house until recently, and not anymore. I was just gonna assume. <laughs> I was just, I wasn't even gonna. I was just gonna let it happen. I was just gonna go like, all right, what's whoever? Rest in peace. Nico just likes you to know? tease me about it because he thinks it's very funny, and 
Mm-hmm. And it was until it wasn't anymore. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, Mitch. You will be missed by the audience at the very least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I had a question mm-hmm. about creativity and making things. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've been like thinking a lot more about like, I think I have a central thesis for mine, which is generally care and catharsis, like hand in hand. I like to make miserable things. It's, I feel the most at home when I'm making misery, uh, very much Junji Ito energy of horrible stuff. Very Ooh. chill person. It's truly how I love to be. And I was wondering, do y'all have like a central thesis you would say like to your work that you tend to make? Cause this is a fun question. Mm, that's a really good question. I think, I think that I can, I, I think that I have a decent answer to this one. Uh, Cause I think about this sometimes. Um, I have, I have a thing that I know that I do in my writing and I am a serial alliterator, um, which is yeah, very fun. I'm very, fun. I just, I'm very into that. I love internal rhyme like that. So that's just, that's not really like a, that's not really like a, a thesis, but it is, it is a hallmark of my writing. Still indicative. Yeah. Um, I think that there is in a lot of the content that I create, I tend to go for a little bit eerie, not like, not like horror, but just like a little bit, a little bit like supernatural or eerie, just a little, a little past the level of comfort. Um, it's kind of melancholy. Oftentimes there's, there's like, it's often just a little, a little melancholy, but like it always winds up somewhere that feels vaguely cozy. Like I shoot straight down the line between eerie and like cozy and warm. Um, and that's, I, I just like, I, I, I shoot a field goal, like right between those two posts. And that's, I think like right where my, where, right where my writing and my, the kind of stuff that I create lands I like the, you know, like the the most classic me thing is like writing a story about a ghost who just wants a hug but can't have it, you know, <laughs> like. Uh, that's nice, like liminal space. Like it, I it'd give it the energy of like a closed Waffle House at 2.30 in the morning. Precisely. Not inherently you... cursed, yeah. but it feels unsettling that you're seeing it. Yeah, it's like it's like walking the like I feel like my writing is like walking is knowing that your friend in the art club is somewhere in the high school because you were staying after school to like work on something together, but you don't know where they are. And it's you and your friend and the janitor and half the lights are off and you're in this husk of like a, a institution of learning. And it's a little weird. It's not like terrifying, but it is a little weird. But you know your friend's out there somewhere. I was going to say being after school after hours is like yeah or at nighttime that's also one of my favorite examples of like something that hits that same style john is like the phrase you see something that looks like your mother because it's so simple and like it's not inherently terrifying because it could just be your mom but it could be so many other things with a setup that easy it's one of my favorite things to use is you see something that looks like (laughs) it's so fun Lucas will attest to this because he's played in a lot of my home games, but for me, it's always a strain of music that you can hear that is, you don't quite recognize it, but it's hauntingly familiar. You know, you've heard it, but you can't place it. Like that's, that's also just a classic me thing is my favorite kind of setting dressing. See, this is, this is frustrating to me, right? Cause like I, I consider myself a very introspective person. So like, what, I don't talk to myself as we've established, so I just think about. I just I, I direct all that inward, right? So it's bothering me that I can't. I haven't done enough unpacking of this to actually mm-hmm. come up with an answer that like is. I've I've disappointed myself. Um, I don't know. Although I will say, Hessen says my indicative writing trait: too many commas and sentence sentence tags. That is too real, and you need to go. I'm sorry. You need to leave. <laughs> So do not perceive me. Banned for being too <laughs> correct. <laughs> Found family is like, that's true. I do do a lot of that. That's a lot of queer folks. That's yeah. not fair. We all claim that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Found family. Yeah. Found family. Um, well, my, mine comes from being, mine comes primarily from being bicultural. So there's that. So like, that's where that one comes from mm-hmm, um, for me. Um, oh gosh. I think. 
I mean, this isn't necessarily something that I always do, but I do like, I always, I do tend to lean towards stories about, like, in, in terms of, not just in terms of my own creative work, but, the, the, like, all of my influences, at least, are stories about broken people just trying to be better than they were, you know? Beautiful. And, like, yes. I don't know that I always dip into that, but that is where, like, most of my influences come from, is media like that. So, yeah. That's probably mm. the closest one that I can come up with right now. <clears throat> I don't know. Freeman, you you don't do a lot of this type, but, like, you do, you do a lot of, like, character work, and, like, that requires a lot of, like... I mean, what are what are yours? Do you have like any sort of central things that come up all the time? Oh, it's just a it's a it's a jumble. It's a mess. It's chaotic. It's it depends on what the the demon tells me that day. Um, <laughs> the, also, to be honest, like, sometimes it's just completely out of the blue. I'll be listening to a song. Right, this is just common. We all have this. We'll listen to a song, or we'll have a there's a smell in the air. We'll smell like a, a sweet smell in spring. And you get a hit of nostalgia, it just hits you in the face and nearly knocks you out. And then it, you just work on something. Sometimes you're like feeling musical that day or you're writing or you're working on character work and that nostalgia kind of guides you. And now I know this is not a complete answer by any means because I don't have a complete answer. I keep figuring this shit out every day, every month. So it's a <laughs> big question. <laughs> it's a good question. I think, I think to start with, I think I have to say like, nostalgia like getting hit with a memory and then following up on that and then following that avenue probably is something i i do although it's like i said it's kind of chaotic because nostalgia just kind of hits you randomly yeah. at times well, and so you follow that path at that moment it's a bit like what olivia just said in chat i think which is i like to lead with cool images and then figure out how to explain them it's a little yeah. bit that it's like yeah. it's basically like like, that. like a connect the dots of creativity right like where you just like mm -hmm. you have these points that you can like attach on to and then you just it's just about figuring out the lines in between them yeah yeah that's honestly that's I feel like that has always been your approach to making characters. Yeah, absolutely. That has always been like in every time we've ever like made like Freeman Freeman is like one of the people who like he, Freeman does not give me like a like multi-page backstory or anything like that. Freeman will give me like a sentence or two and has like dots go. and then mm -hmm. always goes somewhere incredible. Like always goes somewhere like has like a oh. this like deep interesting thing like it, i don't know it's it's great like some some people they don't give me like a back a backstory for their character and i'm like concerned but like freeman will give me like a <laughs> phrase and i'm like all right he's got this like we're good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will go somewhere <laughs> yeah i super feel that though Olivia. like i'm just like oh i've had this cool thought or image or like a like a fraction or a fragment of a sentence or a cool line just runs through your head and you're like i'm following that now right yeah, no, I it's very interesting in the way that I think a lot of us have very similar styles and approaches to working on stuff, but the ways they all get expressed uh, very differently is very fun here. I'm having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very glad like, that you that you suggested this as a topic there because this is like this is very fun. I am enjoying this. <laughs> I love talking about the creative process. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun. You leave a lot of yourself on like like by by asking a question like this because like there's there's no way to answer it without some degree of uh, like sincerity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very fun one because it is very revealing. I think both for like the creator and uh, the person being asked the question of like, Oh, I didn't realize this is what I tend to do sometimes. And it's nice. It's, it's very fun. Yeah. Well, like creating it all requires a certain amount of vulnerability. And so then engaging in like that, I'm going to break up breakout teacher terms. So Koala, you can just hit the counter again. Um, <laughs> but like engaging in that like metacognition about, about the like that vulnerable act of creating is itself, I think another like level of, of kind of like introspection or, or, or vulnerability, like kind of, kind of examining like, okay, so this is what I make and this is kind of how I make it. And how do, how did I, how did I, how do I get there? What is it about me that, that draws me to these things that makes 
that makes it so that given the same prompt, I'll make this and someone else will make something entirely different. Oh yeah. It's it like, I'm going to now use this to describe something uh, exactly the opposite of what you think of, but like, this is why I like reality TV and trash TV a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, I'm a big fan of the circle. I've, uh, one day I'll return to that podcast I have with Banana Chan, Open Circle. It's very fun. Um, it's a, but that show is such a great example of like, a, once again, isolation, like human loneliness, and like reality TV show in, shows in general are like, how often can we take this very basic premise, which is a few people in a house? Uh, sometimes they they're not allowed to hang out. Sometimes they hang out perfectly fine. Whatever. Uh, but you take a bunch of people who are all from different parts of the country, and you just have them interact. And yet that can go for 30 seasons says a lot, I think, about the uniqueness of every individual person um, in a way that is truly very enjoyable um, in that, like, it's a very unspoken part about it. I also love to overthink everything. So this is the other thing that my brain does. (laughs) Yeah. I, down the rabbit hole uh, this is it's funny because mm-hmm. this is one of the one of this was one of the hardest learned lessons for me when i was like because like i said I, I was an english major in college and like studying writing and for the writing focus i had to take a bunch of like creative writing classes and like one of the hardest learned lessons is like wow why should i even do this because somebody else has already like done this that doesn't matter because that is exactly it somebody else not you. You haven't done this. Somebody else has maybe written this, but they are not you. They cannot write what you have written. And like, that is like one of the things that's like, I think, and I saw it even like after I like left that like intro course, right? Like looking back whenever I was interacting with, when I was, when I was in like an older student looking and like interacting with like the younger English students, they had those same struggles. And like for them, it would, I remember seeing them struggle in exactly the same way that I did, which was like getting over that hurdle of like, it doesn't matter that somebody else has written it because it was somebody else. Um, mm-hmm. And nobody can write anything the way that you can write it. And yeah, I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I remember like at Gen Con 2019 at that, I, 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 t- I harp on these two, these two industry guest of honor talks mm-hmm. all the time, but they were really, really good. Um, Shauna Germain, like during the Q and a session, during the one about creative resilience, somebody came up to the microphone and asked, you know, I feel like everything that I want to do has already been done already. You know, I feel like all of the ideas that I have are played out or dry. Um, and like, Her answer was pretty much that is just like, look for something in between the things that you like, look at the things that you like, and then look at the spaces in between them and see what draws you in there. And that, 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 that will, that will almost always find you something that you, that you want to make and that the, you will see something different there than somebody else does. There are very Mm -hmm. few questions I've found in like creative work more powerful than why. Like there are very few questions more powerful than why. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about the why, like that's me all the time. That's, I always want to know why something is the way that it is. Like John will attest to this, like when we're, when we're working on like stuff in like when we're working on stuff together, I always want to like, we'll come up with a character. We'll come up with a cool concept for that NPC or whatever. But then I, my next question is being like, okay, but why are they doing this? Like, why are they like this? And that's immediately the next thing. And it's such an important thing for me. Um, and I think it's a very powerful tool for creation. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, like I, I feel like in, in Potter syndrome is a reoccurring thing that comes up, I think in my characters mm-hmm. uh, more than my actually like GMing and like my writing stuff um, because haha, uh, welcome to being a content creator. It's nothing but imposter syndrome, but like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, too loud yeah. for a second. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Like, like through the lens Sick of being mark. marginalized also makes it mm-hmm. so much more frustrating yeah. um, mm-hmm. because it, it constantly feels like you're fighting for space on this very small platform uh, in which they can, we could fit three. And if you're not one of those three, you're constantly like, well, what's the point? Um, or at least at least at one point, I was like, well, what's even the point? And then like finding past that and saying, well, no matter what, one person who will have that exact, very particular type of strata you fall into 
uh, happen may need this. And that what is what pushes me a lot. I, I also do TikTok stuff because I'm a maniac. And one of the hey, scariest. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, one, of, one, uh, one of the <laughs> scariest and like most insightful things I got was like, because that's a very young app. It, there's a, it's so many, so many like very sweet, genuine, incredibly passionate 14 to 15 year olds and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not, and I mean that with nothing but, but like genuine, like All love, the and love. but like getting a DM from someone who's like, Hey, I like, I, I, I just like learned about monster hearts or I just learned about like this thing. And like overhearing you talk about, it, and like, now I'm really inspired to run something for my friends and like, like an, an all like queer, like baby trans thing. And it's like, you know what this is what it ma- this is what matters to me is like if if three people hear me say anything they're like i want to make something now for my friends i i could care less about anything else i am so truly inspired by like hitting one person and knowing that it means something to one person and that's why i'm still here because i managed to hit more than one person and that's pretty cool i'm just keep doing it till i don't enjoy it anymore yeah yeah well like Yesterday, I God, it was yesterday. That seems like so long ago. Time is fake. <laughs> yep. Time, time <clears throat> is a weird soup. Um, <laughs> I so I I streamed yesterday, and it was it was by visibility day yesterday. Um, and I had completely I had completely forgotten that and chosen to play Hades for my stream. Um, and I had not a when I had done it realized how perfect of a game that was to be playing as a as a by creator on 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 Twitch on that particular day. But it wound up that like I was just like I'm just gonna play some video games this afternoon, and it's one of the first times that the, you know it's one of the first few like solo streams that I'm having, and you know it'll be great. We'll we'll do we'll do a couple of like 30 minute runs of Hades, and then we'll we'll call it a day. And it wound up that instead of having time for, you know, several runs of Hades, we did one two hour speed run because I stopped for like 45 minutes in the middle of because everybody in chat wanted to sit and talk about talk about um, queer identity and like queer phobia in chat. And I was just like, this is a conversation that is so important to me personally. And I am so glad that y'all are here and feel like encouraged by my being here and playing video games and just existing to want to talk about this <laughs> like so yeah I, I know what you mean like yeah. it you it it can feel very easily like oh I don't have a place anywhere in here among these all all of these other people with so much going on that have such important things to say but you do because you're you yeah and your experiences are different from any other person's and so you, you, you can be a part of that conversation. Absolutely. Um, if, if I could pontificate uh, needlessly for like two things that happen to shape, uh, oh, like I thought about two things in particular that happen to shape uh, me as a creator. Um, one, I will thank Tumblr this once. This is your one time Tumblr. <laughs> the word Sonder, like that whole era of like, oh, Sonder, the, th- the realization that a million people or like that everyone's life is as unique and varied as yours. Uh, combine that with like the Watchmen scene, uh, like scene where like a thermodynamic uh, miracle, or like Doctor Manhattan having the realization that yes, once again, like human life is that like beautiful, and it's a series of interesting coincidences and mistakes that all happen to lead up to people just meeting, interacting, and life existing, and like. That is such a very important part of like what I think art is. I don't know why my camera keeps going to the deepest, most evil red as I'm doing this. It's very funny. Uh, for emphasis. It's for emphasis. I've been I've been wondering if it's like your your lights on rotation or something, but no, They're it's just not. the camera light. They just oh keep my. doing it. It keep it keeps focusing out on me and going deeply red for half a second. But like, <laughs> oh my god, wild beautiful realization that like everyone's like perspective, no matter how similar, is still going to be inherently unique because of the way you, you view like the world around you um as a kid I was very weird shocking I know um but like as a five-year-old I used to like set myself into crisis because I'd be like hey what would I see if I looked through like if I could see through an other kid's eyes which I was having the solipsism problem as a five-year-old I was a strange kid but like <laughs> the, the act of like thinking about the uniqueness of I think every single person really helped me as a creator because it meant like, no matter what, no matter what story, no matter how similar one character was to another, 
it was always going to be slightly different because of the difference in setting or of or party members or like that table or even just the time constraints your story for anyone listening who wants to make something your story will be uniquely different because it's you telling it every time even if you're like what if my character too samey it will always be different and like i encourage everyone who's listening continue to create i i love the act of creation in of itself for no other reason than it's fun to make something and it's yours and it's beautiful to hold on to mm-hmm. yeah that was my pontification <laughs> section yeah oh, good excellent and the reality is that when you make something the world now has something new in it mm-hmm. and maybe that's just for you and it can be just for you it doesn't have to be for anybody else but odds are that somebody will see a little bit of themselves in it and that's like we all talked earlier about about what kind of our hallmarks are the things that we gravitate to and all of those are founded in very fundamental human experiences isolation melancholy found family like all of all of these all of these like kind of things that we mentioned earlier are all experiences i think that that anyone can identify with and so when you make something that comes from one of your experiences you have added another little touchstone to the world that somebody else can happen past and maybe that will that will recontextualize their own experiences a little bit for them yeah so you said something that tr- that triggered a thought that i had forever ago and now i'm like struggling to like recall it because i know it's relevant here but i cannot remember what the thought was it's like well thinking about maybe i'll let me just do the thing that i usually do which is talk and see if it see if it comes out eventually like i said i think with my mouth not with my name of the show Um, baby (laughs) so like a while ago i was thinking about this whole concept of this is like kind of tangentially related but it's still related on the on the basis of like less on the on the basis of creation more on the basis of if the effect of creation so like the impact that it has so like there are in especially in media there are like all these and like in the geek sphere like there are like cultural touchstones right like things like ghostbusters blade runner right like those kinds of like in the geek sphere those are like kind of cultural touchstones and i think about those things a lot because <clears throat> like throughout my life um both like through my parents and through like work experiences and whatever I've dealt with multi-generational sort of I had multi-generational connections and so I think about this in terms of the kind the attitude of like of somebody saying somebody like sort of older in the geek sphere saying talking about something and somebody younger saying oh I haven't seen that they're like what oh you have to it's like but do they though that's the question right like do they because those are things that were like culturally relevant and they were part of the zeitgeist at the time. And I'm not saying that they're not now because everything, there's sort of like a long tradition. Like everything kind of influences that space, but does it, is it like inherently important for that? Because like the media that you are, uh, and your inspirations for your, for your time, I think are probably on some level generational, right? Because those are mm-hmm. things that you can relate to in that moment. They are things that draw on the present, on what you, on what was known at the time, what was being experienced at the time. They are things that draw on those. And yes, some of those things will be timeless, right? Some of those things will be just sort of, they will always be relevant. Um, but like some of them I'm thinking, right? Like it's, I, because like I wonder, and this kind of gets us now into a question of more like like marketing and demographics and sort of stuff, right? Because then at a certain point, I think like uh, when it comes to at least pop culture and like you know that sort of stuff, it stops marketing towards you once you sort of pass a certain age threshold, right? Once you sort of pass that, it starts it stops being marketed at you and it becomes less relevant to you. And so the things that are relevant to you are the things. In, in that sphere, the things that are relevant, that were relevant when it was being targeted at you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, and so I, I think about this a lot because now it's less of like, like I said, don't get me wrong. There are some things that are going to be timeless. Like there are, that's just the, the way that it is, but not every cultural touchstone is going to be one of those things. Yeah. 
um, I, I think about this a lot too. Same brain. Uh, my condolences. <laughs> um, but like one of the things I think about a lot, it's like a lot of my most favorite influential media, the stuff that really like impacted me is not necessarily stuff from my like coming of age, but stuff slightly before my time. Things like Ava is one of like a big touchstone for me of being incredibly introspective. And like, I think part of what makes me like a lot of stuff I do or enjoy is more than it, but the way it helped impact what came after. I am a big fan of thinking about the ways like things like, like impact, like the, the ripples and effects uh, down the road. Um, like for, for a less, uh, for a very problematic example, uh, like Birth of a Nation. It is, it is a deeply racist film. It is down to its core about the Ku Klux Klan. However, that is still a thing that deeply influenced all of film language for the history of like, like the world is a, a fundamentally different place when that movie does not exist. And then having to extrapolate, yes, that is a thing we can leave in the past, but acknowledge it was deeply important. And then still seeing like, but history be irrevocably different without it. And I think it's very fun to think about like those sort of edge cases of the things that are important and the way they shape everything that comes after. Um, and still understanding that you still don't need to watch it. I've never watched Seinfeld, but I like Community. I like It's Always Sunny. Those shows don't exist in a world without Seinfeld right. because those are shows that actively push further on that sitcoms are about bad people. Um, you know, that is like, I think at its core, media in often reflecting itself back and forth, whether it be further deconstruction or reconstruction or simply not even trying to reinvent the wheel, but update the coat of paint on the wheel. Like everything exists in in answer to something that has already existed because nothing is holistically created. Um, and it's a very fun question to like sit and think about yeah. the nature of how media works. A perfect example of what you're just talking about, I think, is Lord of the Rings, right? Lord of the Rings extremely influential especially to those of us here in the in like the ttrpg sphere like extremely influential. never watched it all the way through exactly exactly <laughs> and you don't have to and you don't have to is the thing but you can still like you're still influenced by it you're still you can still uh find resonance in things that were influenced by it things that don't exist in a world without it it's like perfect example of what you're just talking yes. about like yeah it's yeah that's the one that i think most often of like what yeah. you're talking about is the one that i most often come up against um, yeah i am not a fantasy fan mm -hmm. however <laughs> it it makes my fan like I, i'm not a fan of like tolkien like that era because of many things right. uh <laughs> but like taking the stuff that i do like from that whether that's the sense of adventure or naturalist or like the inherent just love that someone like Sam and Frodo have for each other. It depends on how you take that, but either in the fraternal sense or the better sense, right. uh, but like taking those in the, uh, the Molly Ostertog, like, yeah, exactly. And taking all of that and still making stuff that actually still commenting on it mm -hmm. is I think part of the fun of making things. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I was thinking. I was thinking while we were having this conversation. I was actually thinking about Tolkien, and I, 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 I had a thought to myself that I was wondering if it was actually true. But I think there will be a period in our lifetime where Tolkien, I think Tolkien to some extent is going to be timeless. But I also think that there's going to come a time within our lifetimes that um, it's not going to be the go-to thing that people think about whenever they think about fantasy anymore. I think that happens in the next several decades yeah. at some point. I hope so. And quite frankly, I say that I hope so as, as a Tolkien mm -hmm. and Lord of the Rings fan, like yeah. I hope that that happens. Right. Please. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> um, I was going to say something and oh, my brain will remember later. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of that here. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I think olivia asked a question a oh while you're right too. you're right you're right they did um where is it oh i uh nope that's not it it's what is a place or piece of media that always inspires you to create something hmm. i guess it's not so much a specific piece of media but like music for me music will always get me there um and i think it's one of those 
like mo- I, I always use like TTRPGs as a, as a reference because my like that's kind of where most of my creative energy goes these days. And so for me, and I've talked about this before on the show, but like a piece of music will like I'll say wow, and I can like visualize a scene from that piece of because of that piece of music. Um and then I start thinking that would be a great moment in a TTRPG. How could I how can I get my group there, right? And I use it as an so I build an adventure around that piece of music, you know, around that one scene. And so like it's not a specific piece of media, but it is a specific like type of media that will always get me in sort of that creative place. So that's my answer to that question. Uh just affirm you real quick, Lucas. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of like filmmaking and stuff, they happen to build the, like movie. Some movies exist simply to make the one scene mm-hmm. like work. Yeah. Um, like I'm a big fan of uh, Uncut Gems and like just the stress of the man trap, uh, like like near the very end where they're living and dying off of like one basketball game. Feels like the entire movie was built to lead to that moment, and like that is a very fun way of creating. It just to create like one hyper specific feeling. Yeah. Into the Spider Verse is so good. That's like right. it's nonstop amazing, but also it that movie builds to that movie builds to ascend. Like that shot of of Miles falling upward towards the ground um, while What's Up Danger is playing. That whole movie, they were like, "We want this moment to happen," and we just back from there. Um, and what happens after, like the, the resolution after that point is fairly quick because the whole hero's journey up in within that show is up to that moment. Like that's that's kind of the pinnacle of it. And it's so well, oh God, this is rant about the Spider-Verse hour. It's so well reflected in all of the music and just like the yes. way, the way that you, the way that you're like the, the themes of the show are like subtly reinforced in each scene by little music cues and the kinds of music that it's playing and how it's playing, whether it feels like it's playing out of something in the space that Miles is in or whether it's playing into our ears, the transition from one thing to the, <sighs> the frame rate, even the frame rate to speak to like, like his increasing confidence and confidence in himself. We, we can't, that, that's a different, this is a different day. <laughs> We can't just do the Spider Verse talk. <laughs> this is a whole we, its own topic. You yeah, know? <laughs> we have a ramblemancy where we just unpack <laughs> into the Spider Verse. Yeah, honestly, when the when the sequel comes out, uh, we'll we'll just have that ramblemancy a week before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, sorry. I, I'm seeing chat is popping off, and I'm very excited about <laughs> these conversations that are happening. Yes. Um, <sighs> Man, I'm trying to think of Freeman. Do you have an answer for Olivia's question, or it will it, it'll depend on the uh, yes, I do. Um, the um, it'll depend on a few factors, but I think I think for the most part, I can always rely on uh, going out in nature, whatever nature is nearby. Um, specifically by the water, I think long like walking on the beach and having whole conversations with myself when no one else is around because it's high tide no one dares (laughs) walk on the beach when the tide's that high i guess i went on a walk on the beach recently and i looked at the tides beforehand i was like ah perfect tides coming up and i'm walking and i get down to the beach and like down there i got my backpack i took the notes down of what time the tide would be and what how many inches and all that i looked at the book and i was like okay looks about right and i'm starting to look look and there's a guy standing looking off towards like down the direction i'm about to go and he looks and he like laughs like there's no way i'm going to do that walks past me and i just kind of walk past him and disappear in the distance and i can only imagine what they're (laughs) what they were thinking but that's kind of where i would go yeah as a location yeah the beach where the tide is potentially slowly crushing me against the um cliffs <laughs> you have chosen a liminal space <laughs> yes um, beach uh i i have one i think um i think mine is i am someone who's like very very much the more i realize like i need always need some sort of stimulation uh constantly uh through music i always have one headphone in minimum if i'm doing something uh just outside of my own house 
Um, so for me, it's walking through a not bustling city, but like walking through a mall in particular. I like walking through a mall with one headphone in is or airports. I, it's airports. Sorry. The right answer is airports now. Airports with one headphone in um, because there it's maybe my favorite place to sort of just sit and think in because of the way airports exist as a as a crossing point of a million lives every second. It's a, lo- a lot of what I do comes back to just like the uniqueness of the human experience. So like airports feel like that where every single person I'm passing who is getting on a plane is going somewhere for some reason, whether that be for joy or uh, like opportunity or grief. Everyone's going somewhere for something and existing in that place while I have nowhere to go for five hours while simply listening to a soundtrack or something that perfectly cat captures my sense of ennui i recommend the fully coolie soundtrack if you're ever stuck in denver for too long Ooh, that's a story for a different day don't get stuck in denver Oof. i live in colorado i can't help it <laughs> <laughs> um but like denver the, the true the middle space <laughs> that the airport is don't talk about blue he will he will yeah. eat you um <laughs> but like ex- like existing in airports happens to hit my like artsy little heart in the right way right there so Tonight is apparently a, a night where I learn a lot of things about myself on stream. Because I think you just put your finger on exactly what it is that I find relaxing about just, like, whenever I've been in an airport and it's, like, hours until my next flight and I just get to sit there. That's exactly what it is. That is – it's that feeling of, like, everybody is, like, rushing around and I don't have to. And I can just be there. Like, that – I I am the moment of stillness in all this bustle. And, like, that's an incredible feeling. And I think you just put your <laughs> finger on it. And I've never been able to, like, really isolate exactly what it is. So today is just a, a, a day where I just learn about myself on stream. <laughs> one of my uh, one of my favorite things to do, like, just jumping off of that, like, from that feeling, too, one of my favorite things, Rambo realized, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do in airports, and this is just a fun writing exercise that you can do to, to get yourself or keep yourself writing, it's just making lists of things you see, hear, touch, smell, taste, you know, anything that your senses can reach. My favorite things to do is just if I'm in a place and I have my I have my notebook, I will start unpacking everything that my senses can detect. And airports are so good for that. Mm-hmm. To just to just sit and be and take it all in. Like this person over here who like is having a conversation on their phone that I only get like scraps of one half of the conversation. And this person looks like immaculate. This person's wearing like a, a, a college sweater and like their hair's up in a ponytail, just like clearly threw it together, came to the airport. Like it's, it's so interesting just like picking apart all the little things, the people who are like very clearly Speaking of airports, I was about to say, was that a was that a very well timed plane? Um, it was a very well timed plane. Um, I live near. I live not very far from the uh, the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, so very frequently. Mm-hmm. They're usually they're like close that to way. the Colorado Springs one. Yep. Um, and so it's just it's just so interesting to know. I, I don't have to do anything for the next two hours. I'm just going to sit here and. I'm going to I'm going to add to my magpie hoard all of the little experiences that I can that other people are living out right. Now. Yeah, it's like life passing you by while you're still actively doing your like doing your life. All you have to do now is exist and that's comforting for once because goddamn if I'm not always moving 17 places. I know. I, I god. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I thought I want to go back to something else that you said though earlier, Derek, because you're saying about like needing to needing that stimulation, and you're you're absolutely right. Like that's that's when I was like we talked about earlier, like in in college, like my study places or like my homework places, I should say, were like the eateries on campus, and people always thought it was weird that I did homework there, but like I could not do anything in the library because it was just too quiet. It was so quiet. Yes. Yes, it was so quiet and I could not concentrate because then my brain would start trying to fill the silence and it did not fill it with what I needed to be doing. It filled it with absolutely anything else. Um, 
And so, like, I needed some of that, like, stimulation. I needed there to be things happening around me that I was not involved in. Like, mm. I needed that to happen because otherwise it was just nothing. Like, just noise in the silence. And, then like, my brain would, would fill it with that. So, and, like, but the weird thing is that's only true for some work that I did because when I was going to be doing, like, writing work, I needed to be away from where things were happening because and because there that matters more because you're there you're like you're not just processing thoughts you're generating them too and so like Mm -hmm. that for for that I needed that sort of space so it's interesting the way that that works right like different type different types of of focus require different sort of amounts of stimulation for me and i i don't know if that's like the curse of the of the neurodivergent uh no the i like i don't know if that's a common experience or if it's at purely as a result of adhd like i truly have no idea but like yeah um i have adhd and it's super real for me too yeah. <laughs> so we're building us we're starting now right we're right. building this <laughs> um but yeah like different different tasks requiring different degrees of stimulation of external stimulation i don't know but that's that's really interesting how that's the case but yeah no like in the like like everybody would recommend like when i was when i was saying i had trouble focusing the first thing that they would say is like have you tried this lot the library i always focus so well there because there's nothing happening like that's why i can't focus there (laughs) it was always it was always the education building for me on our college campus because there was always enough background noise and it was like I would I would tuck myself into this cozy little armchair um underneath the stairs and I would be removed enough that nobody would like be walking directly past me and I could hear the distant like conversation indistinct conversational rumble of class happening or people like talking to each other in their offices but not close enough that I could make out what they were saying just that it was happening and so I'd sequester myself in there with my laptop and whatever reading I needed to do. And I could, I could do a lot of work there, but like if I had to sit in the library, like the, the fucking, the only thing being able having the only thing that I'm able to hear being my own tinnitus and the tap of key, like keyboards, like <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. That is my hell. That is my hell. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But okay. I wanted to point out because geek out says this in the chat, which is exactly true. If I have to pay attention, then I can uh, then I can listen to just instrumental music. It's it's if it's got lyrics, I sometimes start paying attention to the lyrics. Yes, for me that was absolutely the, like I learned this. I got through like several hundred pages of a book that I was reading in one night because I was just listening. I dis- that was the night I discovered that I just needed to listen to, to something without without lyrics, and it had to be the same thing on repeat, like. And because then that was just enough stimulation to sort of like I I always described like my attention as being sort of scatter shot, right? Like my attention was going mm-hmm. like threads of my attention were going in all kinds of different directions, and I just needed that one thing, like that one piece of stimulation. Yes, my attention is still going to be split between what I'm doing and that thing, but it's going to be split mostly between those two things instead of between what I'm doing and a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff equally. You've given yeah. the toddler a toy. Split on like, two versus split on seventeen. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I've also so like one of the like when I described earlier the music that I listen to, oftentimes it's one of several um, like lo-fi hip hop mixes, um, and they're usually like those kind of like hour long videos with the 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 same the same girl in all of them, and there will be some days where I want to listen to like the hour long mix and then into the next mix and then into the next mix. And then there'll be some days where I only want a particular one hour mix. And there'll be some days where I want one song on repeat from one of those mixes. Like it just depends on the level. And sometimes I do actually just want silence, like um, very rarely, but like it's, it's, it's almost like it's a variable level of distraction depending on the task at hand and where I'm at that day. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I do that with songs, especially when I walk places. I can often pace my walk based on how many songs I'm listening to or like ch- like chores or something like that where it's like oh I'm listening to like this this and this song I've spent about let's say 12 minutes because they're mountain good songs so they got a little bit of length nice right like mm-hmm. so it's one of those things oh, I know these songs incredibly well so I know how much time I'm wasting slash spending productively versus like if I'm 
just driving somewhere, podcast, perfect. I don't have to focus. If I'm driving to work and I need to make sure that I'm not going to like take too, like too short, that's when the like uh, one, my morning like drive playlist kicks in. It's, they're all like, like music is so like built, like I, I, since I have to commute more for work, I listen to a lot more music now because I do so much more work built around timing and stuff like that where it's needed uh, or else I'm just going to be aimless all day. It's a lot of computer work, which is nice, but music makes me feel like I'm not wasting all my day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is is a lot more productive than the energy we had right before we went live. (laughs) I will say. (laughs) That is kind of how ramble Mancy goes sometimes as we're gremlins in the 20 minutes, like before the episode. And then like we, we laser focus and then we wander and then we laser. Is here's the thing. If you go everywhere, eventually you're bound statistically you're bound to be on the rails at some point right like statistically speaking um yeah yeah <laughs> you just take a fistful of darts and all, all of them at the wall uh some of them are gonna hit the board yeah exactly. <laughs> um this is a totally unrelated like thing but it's still on the subject of like kind of attention this is actually this might be just entirely unrelated i don't know i'm not going to try to justify it the point is so john you mentioned earlier about like solo streaming right and it reminded me of like Mm -hmm. so here i have a working theory that i'm going to share with all of you um right Mm -hmm. now so i find solo streaming exhausting like and i'm sure to to some degree everybody does i think but there are some people who can do it really well you know, there's some people who can, who can do it really well, and then there are just some people who who can't. And I was I was operating for a while under the assumption that it was like a skill that you like develop over time. You just got to do it more and whatever. But I feel like hmm. there 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 would also be you would think that there would be at least some sort of bleed in that skill from streaming with a bunch of other people to streaming by yourself, right? So that would yeah. give you a leg up maybe. But here's my so here's my working theory because that has not been mm-hmm. my experience. So here's my working theory. I think and cuz I've I and all of this is purely anecdotal. So um but so a lot of streamers that I know who do like solo streaming are introverts. I wondered if this is where this, this is where going. this is going. Yeah. They're introverts. Because and and I think that for them it it might be easier because for me the exhausting thing about like as an extrovert the thing that is exhausting about streaming is trying is having no feedback. Yes, mm-hmm. having no feedback. I, I need people to mirror and bounce exactly. off. Exactly. Of. I need yes. other energy to match. Exactly. And if I'm the only energy, yes, because, I mirror people real real big. Just for I didn't I I wasn't able to tune into so, any of your streams, John. But like just from hearing you talk about them and hearing how they went. And knowing how they went, I was like, hmm, interesting. More data for the chart. And like, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fascinating now that I think about this too, because weirdly, I am kind of energized almost by those. Like, and I think part of that is also just like the newness of it and the excitement of a lot of those things. But there is also something to be said for like, I usually, I usually like I'm tired by the end of the stream, but also I, I clicked, I, 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 I raid and then I click the end stream button and I'm like, it's good tired. I felt good. It's good tired. It's good tired. Yeah. It's good tired. Like it's the kind of tired that you feel like after like a good workout, you know, where you're like, wow, that that was rough, but I feel good. Like <laughs> Yeah. And I think I think I think I think you are kind of onto something here because when I'm reviewing the list of people that I know that are solo streamers, so many of them are introverts. Mm-hmm. It's like, the, um, it's like the, uh, I remember t- there was a, there was a, a woman that I, that I spoke to in, in college once about, and she, she was a, a theater person. And I remember we, like, we were having this conversation and I was saying how like, yeah, no, like I enjoy theater, but I think more in, in concept than like being involved. in it. I like the idea of being involved in it more than I like actually being involved in it. Because for me, there's just anyway. We we got into that, and and I was like, I don't know. For me, it's just sort of this this the idea of being on like on stage. I like being on stage. I like being in front of people. But like, it's just so much pressure trying to keep that sort of thing. And I was like, I honestly don't know how you do it as a like. I would imagine it would be so much harder as as like an introvert. And she was like, No, absolutely not. It's easier because I get to be anybody else. Like exactly. And, like, and I was like, Huh? <laughs> I never thought of that. But so like that's I'm wondering if it's like the same kind of thing, you know, where it's like yeah. 
like there's like, like Kirk Cobain is someone who's famously incredibly introverted, mm-hmm. quiet, or I believe Freddie Mercury is also someone who's generally pretty quiet, if I remember correctly. But like you know, very bombastic on stage. Stand ups are very similar in that way. If right. a lot of them are very like very awkward, like you know, like folks. Like I think Bo Burnham is a great example of that. Actually, mm-hmm. um, like I love his his like. The, the person he is when he tells a joke and as he's walking from like <laughs> Mike to the piano is a much more mm-hmm. nervous individual than when he's actually hitting notes. And it's very fascinating to watch the way like jokes are like very stuttery and stumbly until he's singing and then they're smooth and perfect. And it's, yeah. it, it's a very like human thing to see that I really do love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is just my like, Hmm. I might not be related to anything we were talking about. I don't know. You, I'll let you decide, all of you. Um, it's created. Yeah, it's created. It's... But, like, it was a thought that I had. And when you mentioned solo streaming earlier, John, it, like, triggered that thought. And I was like, hmm, yeah. I'm going to bring it up. Oh. <laughs> Especially in the Bo Burnham thing, because, like, I'm also a performer. And so I'm wondering, like, performance, again, feels good to me. Because, like, I have I have a set of things that I'm going to do. And those there's, I, I, I have now like separated myself from like, I'm, 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 I'm Gremlin John sitting in his room on Twitter to like, you know, I'm playing this role in this play. I'm on stage performing in the choir. I'm part of the ensemble for this, or I'm I like the difference between me in college, like music voice seminar, walking up to the front of the room and and introducing myself and going, hi, my name is John Boyle. Uh, tonight I'll be singing Vittorio Mio Core by, like the difference from doing that and fucking, and then I do it now because I'm sitting alone in my room by myself and not in front of a room full of my peers who are about to judge me on my singing. <laughs> but, you know, stumbling through that and then like, you know, tailing down, taking a breath and then performing and all of a sudden, like, I'm just, I'm here now. Like I'm mm-hmm. like, Vittorio. Vittoria mio core. Right. I, I'm 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 often I'm often performer land until the end of that three minutes. Um I think that that's an art song. There's no way that DMCA can nail us for that one. You don't <laughs> you never know. They might they, they might flag it as something else. You know <laughs> yeah. true. Um, um if they manage to fla- like nail what like a song from like the 1600s yeah, that's in them. every yeah, I'm I that's they can have that. They, like honestly they 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 earned that one. They <laughs> yeah. put in work on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um you know what yeah, respect true. like I, yeah, no, the, the split on like openness like private versus like uh performance is also something i think a lot about as like i've joked or like i've as i've become more of like a, a public like facing persona like like the act of becoming someone who's a deeply online and known for being like in in numerous places mm-hmm. and like spaces it's a very interesting thing of like i i'm a very extroverted person but like when i go home i do not like to I, like, I don't like super having company over there. I have like a very small select thing of people who I like to hang out with because we, we're very much the same brain and we will talk about like the act of art and stuff in this, like a very similar way to this. But I'm not someone who likes to have like friends come over and hang out. Um, I'm someone who wants to go out and do that because it's that sense of performance. But if I'm home, I absolutely have no desire to like be, be seen or perceived mm-hmm. unless I'm like, here in my like very like art, like decorated space for performing um but like the rest of my home I, I fight my partners a lot on making sure that I have a decent amount of bare walls to just stare at because I do not <laughs> like I'm not someone who's big into I, I like having empty spaces to sort of like who not exist Dare, why are we the same person <laughs> so this is Understood. so weird to me because like <laughs> I have the wall next to me is covered in (laughs) art that I have made art that friends have made people's fucking business cards like just anything that I find pretty it's all it's all it's all up here. And so that's next to me. And so if I want that visual stimulation, I can look over and kind of lose myself looking at Jen Bartel's art or Alex Perkins art or, or Caitlin or Bree, like, you know, all of, all of any, anybody over here, but also the wall in front of me where my ring light is a peek behind the scenes is just blank. There's nothing there. That's what is directly behind my monitor. And so sometimes when There's I am a fucking in front of stu- I, I just nothing. <laughs> I just I just stare there and and fucking zone out. <laughs> That's art. <laughs> <laughs> Big blue blank wall. I don't know if anybody 
if the camera resolution is such that anyone can see where it was painted over, but this room was a truly horrific shade of pink. Uh, oh. Once upon a time, a truly people who built this house, uh, the upstairs floor where I live, uh, these were the kids or the two rooms up here were the kids rooms and they let the kids pick the exact shades. Of oh, paint. they didn't like, they didn't like, let, and these are small kids, like single digits kids. Um, they didn't, and they must not have like looked at the colors the kids wanted and then chosen an attractive shade. <laughs> they just let the kids pick. And so when I say that it is a violent shade of pink hiding behind this, this <laughs> thick coat of dark blue, like walk it in, is a walk in the room insta headache. Um, yeah, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of that vibe. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But no, I, I I feel that I feel that like it, my my walls are alternatingly very blank and very full. Um, I'm, it's nice. I'm sorry. I'm just still mm -hmm. laughing about the fact, like talking about any kind of like opera. We we summoned Verdiman. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we summoned Verdiman. <laughs> Verdiman is a friend yeah. of ours who is an who is a professional opera performer. <laughs> Love that yes. energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been public it's been in the public domain since the 1700s so you should probably be fine i am impressed so. with myself that i remembered nice. the um the 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 time range of a song that i sang in my sophomore year of college when i was 19 years old i hey john listen i'm gonna add this one to the teacher count I'm gonna... like this feels like it belongs <laughs> john, yeah we just, can we can add to the throw teacher us count. all in the crisis here real quick that was almost a decade ago anyway uh that's the Violent. end of our show <laughs> Violent. That, oh, you're gonna <laughs> anyway uh thank you for coming everyone we'll see you the next time you decide to come roll with us <laughs> <laughs> um dare honestly it's been so much fun having you here we're gonna have to have delightful you back. we have to have i you also back. I, I've been meaning to say this yeah. for so long, Lucas. Mm -hmm. uh, as you were one of the first people I ever, I ever got to do a stream with, this has been a long time coming. Yeah. Like, I need to, like, make this clear. The stream, I, like, I, because I, I'm coming up on my first year anniversary of ever doing anything in the streaming space. So I've been wanting to say, hey, thank you for, like, being so welcoming. I think about Mickey Corelli a, a lot. Uh, I think about that stream a lot. It, it means a lot to me as my as my first baby stream. I just had to let you know. Oh, that. okay. I guess this is what we're doing now. Uh, Sincerity is allowed. Uh, well, I'm glad. I I like genuinely like after like in that game, it was just like, wow. Okay, this person needs to be in more stuff, and I have a platform, so let's do it. <laughs> um so yeah no absolutely it's been it's been uh i'm so glad we finally were able to make this work so um thank you for coming mm -hmm. um we uh just sort of like run through the the basics here at the end uh reminders about stuff tomorrow i'm just gonna go through it real quick so we can get to like other stuff one republic city rumble for the for, over on q times 6 p.m pacific time it's gonna be awesome our uh avatar legends uh, four episode collaboration with Q Times. That'll be over there. It's gonna be awesome. Are you you want to you want to see some some pro bending actual play? There it is. Um, because that's what I always wanted, so we made it. Um, I will also be on a Kids on Bikes charity stream. Um, tomorrow, at like twenty minutes before that, starting twenty minutes before that. Uh, so that's where I will be. I will put make sure to put all information, all relevant information, links and stuff like that in a more permanent place in the Discord so that you can find it more easily. That is where I will be. Um, <clears throat> obviously, no Mass Effect Nights uh, for the next month or so while we do Republic City Rumble and we we'll work on that. Uh, but we will be picking up with that later on. Um, okay. Dare, tell everyone where they can find you and what you've got oh, going on. All right. I hope everyone has enough time to brew a nice cup of co coffee. Oh, listen, um, we have Drac on this channel a lot. So, like, that's believe so me. funny. You're... That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> no, no, we're ready. We're... I love Drac. When, <laughs> when right, Drac perfect. starts going, everyone's just like, all right, so uh, this is a my, good time to take a drink. I, oh, yeah. People have a nice bit of like going to take a drink. It's very funny. Um, all right. Hi, everyone. I'm Dare. If you like what I do, uh, which is talk too much about everything uh please check me out on twitter and tiktok mainly at nb dare that is e-n-b-y-d-a-r-e -E. i happen to be many things including a, a dice affiliate with diehard dice so if you happen to like dice uh this is one of my favorites 
I'd recommend going there and using the promo code and be there for 10% off. If you happen to like coffee, which I needed a little bit of a pick me up right before this started, I'd recommend going to check out grindingcoffee.co. It's a very lovely uh, queer black owned coffee business. Use that promo code for us for 10% off. Uh, in terms of many of the things I do, I write tabletop games sometimes. So if you happen to think my words about making things are fun, check out a game where the world ends. I'd recommend going to uh, nbdare.itch.io slash sunset for when the sun dies. It is a game where the world ends in three days. It's very fun because it starts off very lighthearted and people always cry by the end. It's beautiful. Um, I also happen to write a little bit and edit for uh, a companion piece to the Wild Beyond the Witchlight uh, called Attractions and Adventures. It is a essentially carnival attraction for a bunch of fake creatures. I'd recommend checking that out in BM Guild. So many amazing creators worked on that. I just had the pleasure of getting to help edit that. Um, in terms of places I will be, there we go. That's the first half of that. Um, I just finished a four week long stint playing interstitial, um, at my main hub, the ephemeral forest that is twitch.tv slash ephemeral underscore forest interstitial was a delight in a beautiful little series, very kingdom hearts. We danced around copyright so damn hard. It, I really recommend checking that out. It was a great, great time. Um, I am tomorrow. I'm going to be on the unremarkables, which is a brand new, uh, mask actual play. So if you happen to like mask, I've been yelling about it for too long. I really recommend checking that out. Um, I know I, ah, the big one, uh, I'm also on transplanter RPG currently doing a yeah. mini series, uh, which is incredible. Transplanter RPG is a, uh, I am doing the hounds of mercy mini series, which is a all people of color, all trans, um, D and D campaign ran by the incredible Connie Chong. Uh, Connie's great. That entire cast is immaculate. It, I feel honored to be there. Um, and I think that's everything I have coming up that I can talk about. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we just hit our goal. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. I was so busy just like rapidly yeah. going through Twitch streams no, no, and like so your socials sorry. dare and just like boop, 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 so into sorry. chat. <laughs> wow. I. Mm, so look at that but okay. guess we're having a jackbox night sometime oh, next month oh um yeah we'll uh we'll we'll figure out a good night for that jackbox night in discord huh? i love this little bit you're doing yeah. <laughs> oh my god edgerfit oh how did that happen how indeed edgerfit how oh, indeed uh, awfully <laughs> nice that we hit that <laughs> indeed wow Wow, thank you so much. Um yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me recover from that for a second. <laughs> Let me a little like rewind for a second before I realize that. Okay. Um that is wow. awesome, Dare. That's like a lot of super cool stuff that you're doing. Um you sh y'all should go check it check all that it's stuff out. Cool. Um Okay. Ooh, <laughs> is Rainy still going? Good if Rainy is still going, we should absolutely Oh rain. shit, hold on. Let John, me you go. might have to do this one again because I me... still have not logged in on OBS. So oh, it's uh, all good. Is Rainy I still think so. I know she hit the goal. Oh, she let's is. Do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We got a raid ready. I was on Rainy's stream this morning playing Monster Pro. Yeah, it's it's Rainy's birthday today, so let's go. <laughs> let's do it. For... Very it was yeah. a good time. We all had we all had birthday a fun time Rainy dating monsters very whole until it yeah. Until it crashed. I said the word cock a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I was safe the one no. time. <laughs> remember, remember, oh. hey, hey, Derek, remember before we went live when I was like, yeah, we don't do chaos on this channel. I lied to you. Um, like it was, it, we hand, we were so, it, like this was a very just like, high, like high ADD, like art talk for so long mm -hmm. until the final two minutes. <laughs> Truly, yeah. truly drop the ball at the end. I love it. Just everybody chose violence simultaneously. Um, <laughs> this is the second day in a row now that I have chosen just the most crass form of violence at the end of the stream, too, because I told Lucas about what happened yesterday. All right. Well, let's go raid Rainy. We are, let, we're going to go and, uh, and break Rainy on her birthday. Um, everybody, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. We will see you over on Q Times tomorrow for Republic City Rumble, but if not, we will see you the next time you decide to come roll with us. Good night and good zone, everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around for the raid. Um, we'll see you next time.